Apple's custom T2 chip has recently made its way to their 2018 MacBook Pros, and it's responsible for a lot more than people think. It makes the Mac more secure than ever before, as well as adding some pretty substantial performance improvements. We'll explain everything you need to know about Apple's T2 chip. First off, it's actually an upgrade from the T1 chip that first launched inside the 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. The T1 chip's main purpose was to run the System Management Controller, or SMC, and Touch ID Sensor within the Touch Bar. The SMC operates as a secure enclave for the processing and encryption of fingerprints, as well as the microphone and FaceTime HD camera, meaning that hackers can't access any of that without going through the T1 chip's encryption first, which is a lot harder than it sounds. To make it even better, the T1 chip runs EOS, a variant of watchOS, so it's completely separate from the Intel CPU running macOS, making it even more secure. Now onto the T2 chip, which actually debuted on the iMac Pro. It takes care of the same exact tasks as the T1, but adds an image signal processor, audio controller, and SSD controller that includes new dedicated AES hardware for encryption. Let's first touch on the added image signal processor. Apple says that it works with a FaceTime HD camera to enable enhanced tone mapping, improved exposure control, and face detection based auto exposure and auto white balance. Let's look at a quick camera comparison. This is an audio and video quality test on the 2017 13 inch base model MacBook Pro. This is an audio and video quality test on the 2018 13 inch Touch Bar MacBook Pro with the T2 chip. As you guys saw, the white balance is much better exposure has improved, and the detail in my hair and eyes was no longer getting crushed by dark shadows. We also noticed a pretty big difference in microphone quality as well, thanks to the T2 chip's audio controller, which also takes care of the stereo speakers, which may be one of the reasons why they sound quite a bit better than last year's speakers. On top of that, the T2 chip adds Hey Siri support to the new MacBooks, and since it's all encrypted, your commands are totally secure. Thanks to the new SSD controller, the T2 chip now automatically encrypts your SSD regardless of whether you have File Vault on or not. However, Apple recommends that you do enable it for added security, since with File Vault enabled, your encrypted SSDs automatically mount and decrypt when connected to your Mac. The best part about the T2's encryption is that it uses dedicated hardware instead of the Intel processor. Now there's two benefits for this. The first being the fact that your data never reaches the Intel processor for encryption, so it's more secure. The second benefit is that by using dedicated hardware, there's absolutely no effect on SSD performance. Let me show you an example. Here are some screenshots from the 2017 MacBook Pro. Before enabling File Vault, storage speeds are really fast. Upon enabling, we're told to connect the power adapter. After doing so, encryption starts and we're told we have to wait a full day for it to finish. And if you decide you don't want File Vault enabled, you can't disable it until it's finished. Finally, once completed, the storage read speed permanently went down a significant amount. Now let's do the same on the 2018 MacBook Pro. Here are the storage speeds before. Now let's enable File Vault. Bam, done. Let's test the storage speed one more time. And as you can see, no change in speeds at all. Now there's actually other ways that the D2 chip can improve your performance. I don't know if you ever noticed other parts of your system slow down when doing tasks that completely max out your CPU, but all of the tasks and controllers that the T2 chip takes care of won't be affected at all. Now here's perhaps the biggest security enhancement that the T2 chip brings, Secure Boot. What it does is make sure that only a legitimate, trusted operating system loads at startup. By default, it's in full security mode, allowing only your current OS or signed OS software currently trusted by Apple to run. It also disallows booting from external media like USB or Thunderbolt devices. This offers great protection from hackers who could potentially boot into a different operating system in order to steal your data or anything else. Although not recommended, you can change these settings within macOS recovery mode. Since Apple's custom T-series of chips are now taking more and more controllers and tasks away from the main Intel processor, it's making it easier for Apple to switch over to their own line of processors, assuming they decide to, of course. And seeing as Intel has once again delayed delivery of their 10 nanometer processors, which Apple has already produced for over a year now, 
it doesn't seem like a very bad idea. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one, and let us know what you think about this explanation in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.